This is Andrew Stotts of A. Stotts Investment Research to talk to you about world-class benchmarking. Today, I'm going to talk about a research paper I've done, which is called, What is More Important for Price Performance, Profitability or Growth? You see those two yellow boxes? The two factors that make up the profitable growth ranking are profitability, return on assets, and growth, EPS growth. We're going to look at, is either one of these more valuable than the other? So the hypothesis we start with is hypothesis one, which says high profitability in any one year also results in coincidence price performance in that year. Remember, we're not measuring the forward price performance. That would be for stock picking. We're measuring coincident price performance. In other words, is that stock moving along with this measure, since world-class benchmarking is mainly for management of a company? Now, hypothesis number two is high growth rather than profitability in any one year also results in coincidence price outperformance in that year. So the first thing that we're doing with these two hypotheses is trying to see that whether either of these or both of these uh, would, if if you had a high level of them, that they would outperform the overall market, that portfolio of stocks. And hypothesis number three is high growth is more important than high profitability for price performance or price outperformance. In other words, if you could grow, it doesn't matter how profitable you are, you would still, you would beat, uh, you would have a higher price performance. So let's go through these and preparing the universe. How are we going to prepare the universe for this study? First, we started with our world-class benchmarking database consisting of 27,000 companies globally. Yes, that you heard me correct. That's a massive database we're managing. We looked at 20-year time period from that data, so 1997 to 2016. Then we removed financial companies and and were left with 23,500 non-financial companies. After that, we removed 4,000 stocks that did not have the fundamental data needed for the study. If you don't have return on assets, if we don't have assets, I couldn't calculate return on assets. Now, each year, we only included companies with a market capitalization greater than $500 million. We could extend this to small cap companies, but for simplicity, let's keep it there. That will cut off a lot of companies. Now, to be included in any one year, the company needed to have full-year price data in that year. Otherwise, we couldn't, pre- we couldn't calculate the price performance. Now, to eliminate outliers, these are stocks that are, have massive numbers that are not real in most cases. We excluded stocks that had a price change of more than 500% or less than minus 80% in any one year. Now, this left us with on average 4,500 stocks after all of these different steps that we went through per year. The minimum for any one year was 1,500 and the maximum was 8,400. Now, the next thing we want to do is test the coincidence between profitability and price performance. We use return on assets to measure profitability, and the companies in the top three deciles, which had the highest ROA in each year, we called high profitability companies. Now, to test across sectors and size, we created our high profitability portfolio by combining the top three deciles, which had the highest ROA in every sector and from each size group. So let me explain that more. What we mean by that is that we took every single one of those uh, companies in our data set and we put it into a sector. There would be no point in comparing it to other companies in other sectors. The next thing we did is we asked was it was large, medium, or small company. So within the sector, we're comparing it against its own peers, literally its global peers by sector and size. So next, we measured the one-year price performance ending at each year's closing period compared to the one year before. Our high growth portfolio included on average 1,700 stocks per year. There was a minimum of 400 and a maximum of 2,900 stocks in that portfolio. Now, let's get to that hypothesis. High profitability in any one year also leads to coincident price outperformance in that year. So what did we find? What we found was that the universe, if we started with 100 in 1996 and we carried that, we we kept reinvesting that 100 into the overall market of all stocks, we would have ended up with 342. Now, if we, and I've done this all in US dollars, if we 
took that same hundred and instead of investing in all stocks, we invested in the stocks that could had remained up in the top three deciles. Now we're rebalancing the top three deciles every period, but we're looking for those stocks that have remained. So what we end up with is a portfolio of stocks that have high uh, high profitability. And the result is, is that you'd end up with 772. So uh, a, a little bit more than double what you would get if you were investing only in the market. So that's pretty good. If we turn that into a price return, uh, a cumulative annual price return, what we would see is the coincident return for the market or the universe was five and for high profitability was 10, so double. Now let's just look at that and find out what's happening each year. Was this all this gain in one year or two years? And the blue line is the price performance of the high profitability portfolio. And we can see that only one year was their underperformance. Every other year, there was outperformance. So pretty good to own high profitability companies. What we could see is number of years that each group beat the sector peers in the past two decades was 95%. So that was the number of winning periods. Now we want to test the coincidence between growth and price performance. So we used EPS growth as our measure of growth and the companies in the top three deciles, which had the highest EPS growth in each year, we called high growth companies. To test across sectors and size, we created our high growth portfolio, combining the top three deciles, which had the highest EPS growth in every sector from each size. We measured the one year price performance ending at each year's company's closing period compared to one year before. Our high growth portfolio included on average 1,300 stocks per year. Minimum was 400 and maximum was 2,500. Now the hypothesis was high growth in any one year also results in coincident price performance in that year. So what did we find? Well, this is what we found. We remember that we were at 342 and 772 for high profitability, but high growth gave us a massive 1178. So a very massive performance by staying in companies that are high growth. So we can look at that on a annualized return basis and see high growth companies generate a return of 13% compared to high profitability companies at 10 and the market at five. So they're both good. And this of course is only looking at that one factor. We're not looking at high profitability and low uh, valuation, let's say, or low PE. Only one factor, high profitability for the first one, and only one factor, high growth for the second. Now, if we look at the high growth companies, we can see that there were two occasions where there were a, where there was a underperformance, but in general, it outperformed. So the number of years that each group beats the sector peers in the past two decades, high growth a little bit less so. You could imagine that in bad times, a high growth company may collapse a lot. So but still a high growth company does better than the overall market and better than high profitability. It's just that in this case, not every single month is a winning period. So what have we learned? Well, high profitability companies generate more than two times market return and high growth companies more than three times market return over the past 20 years. High growth companies generate a return of 13%. So high growth is the winner compared to high profitability companies at 10% per year. During that time, the market returned 5%. High profitability companies beat the market 95% of the time and high growth companies 90% of the time. So, wow, that was quite a test. It was a little bit of a long one, but now you can understand more. You want to grab, you want to become a better investor? Well, grab our free newsletter. Just go to becomeabetterinvestor.net slash join and we'll see you there.